John chapter number 4. The book of 1 John, way near the end, chapter number 4. Now we're settling down. That's better. If you'll give me attention for just a short few minutes tonight, I want to attempt to do something I've never done before and explain and show this congregation tonight from the scripture what is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 10. As always, the Bible has the answer. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Tonight, I want to attempt to try to illustrate this truth for you this evening. If everybody will give me your attention, please. Just for a few minutes. Probably the most widely used, most often referred to, the most misunderstood and misused, misinterpreted, misrepresented word in the English language is love. It's the rhyme of more poems than any other story. It's the subject of more books than all the other books on the shelf. It's the theme of more songs, country, gospel, rock, uh, classical, love, than any, all the other titles put together. It's the story of more movies. All the movies, what are the movies? Built on a love story. Somebody falls in love, wound up happily ever after, you know, the, the, the regular storyline. Everybody wants to love and be loved. The definition of love, according to the dictionary, is a great interest or pleasure in something. An intense feeling of deep affection, fondness, attachment, or a deep romantic attachment of love. Another definition is unconditional affection with no limits or conditions. According to that, there's not a whole lot of real love in this world. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many has definitely waxed cold. The word love is over 300 times in the Bible. I'm not even gonna go into all the different words translated love, uh, agape, eros, phileo, the three uh, word trans and, the, and the other ones. I'm not even going to go into why the King James Bible uses the word charity in 1 Corinthians 13 for love. And the reason it does is because charity is the purest form of love. It's giving. Now, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. All of the endless attempts to define love, poets, authors, songwriters have fallen short of what real love really is. Now the truth is tonight, we, me and you, as fallen creatures are not capable of having or showing true, pure love. We're not able to do it without God. For the Bible said God is love. And so real love tonight uh, has to come from God. If it's not God's love, then it's not pure or real love. I've had a teenager, I've been preaching to young people since I was one myself. And they ask me, they'll say, Brother Danny, I'm 15, I'm 16. I'm in love. But my mama tells me that I can't be in love. Now, that's not right. A teenager can be in love. But the problem is, they ain't got enough sense to know what to do with it. And, and most older people don't either. 
we are not, we are not capable in these sinful bodies of ours of, of knowing the pure love of God. The world tonight is continually selling lust portrayed as love. Those are two completely different meanings and words. Let me just give you a little difference right quickly. Here's the difference between lust and love. Lust says it's physical. Love is spiritual. Lust is temporal. That means it wears off as time goes by. Love is lasting. It don't end. Lust is selfish. Like if I can't have you, nobody else is, you know, that kind of thing. That's not love. That's lust. Love cares about the other person and not just themselves. Say amen. According to that, the hip hop industry knows nothing about love. The soap operas knows nothing about real love. They have no idea in this world. Lust says, hurry up. Right? Love says, take your time. But we just can't wait. That ain't love. Lust brings guilt. Love brings peace. You don't feel guilty about real love. Lust wants to do wrong. Love wants to do right. Lust centers on me. Love centers on them. Lust believes their mate is perfect. Love sees their faults and accepts them anyway. Oh, baby, I just ain't never seen you're perfect, darling. You're the perfect angel. He's full of his beans, brother. If ever a man talks to you like that, you know he's full of the devil. Oh, darling, I've never seen anything as beautiful. You're perfect. You're my, yeah, whatever. That ain't true, and he knows it ain't true. After you know their faults and you still want them, that's what love is. That's why in Hollywood, that's why them country music come out saying, I never seen nobody as pretty as you. I, and they do that, you know, and, and then I'm in love and over heels, this gonna last forever. And their next album is, you ain't what I thought you was. Right? Because that wasn't love to start with. You hear about that one country music singer? He had to retire because his adenoids cleared up. But anyway, lust centers on me. Lust feeds on fantasy, make-believe. Love is rooted in reality. Lust decreases in time. It's bigger when it first starts than any other time. It just gets littler and littler and littler and littler and littler. That's why them people can't stay married. That's why they can't stay in a, quote, relationship. Because it starts out that big and just gets littler and littler and littler and littler. Love starts out little and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This is what the unlearned, unspiritual, mentally challenged people in Hollywood just can't understand. I heard about a girl not long ago. Met a guy online. I think she was 14 or 15. They began talking back and forth. Little by little, he kept saying, why don't you meet me this weekend? Why don't you meet me down at the coffee shop? Why don't you meet me down and they met at Starbucks or somewhere like that. And he wasn't who she thought he was online. They found her dead body 80 miles away two weeks later, stabbed and murdered. That's what the world thinks is love. If you were to go into the average home, the average school, the average church, the average high school, middle school. This is what you'd see. Go ahead, Brian. This is what you would see.
Hi, my name is Tasha Jenkins. I grew up in a typical home and community. My parents always took care of my brother and me. We even went to church once in a while. But everything changed when I met Jacob. My name is Tasha Jenkins, and this is my story. Knowing not it was for me, he died. Yeah, it's me, Tasha. I just need somebody to talk to. Yep, it's Jacob again. He is such a jerk. When he told me he loved me, I actually believed him. Wow, I was so wrong. And yeah, he broke up with me, and now he's with that Kiana girl, or whatever her name is. Just as soon as I told him that, well, I ain't took a test yet, but I think I am. What kind of a person would do that to somebody? I gave him all of me, my time, my heart, everything. I thought that's what love was. What is love anyway? You may be here tonight, and that looked like you. There's hundreds of teenagers here tonight that have gone through similar or worse than what you've just seen. And most of the time, the story does get worse. Let's talk for a minute about home love. That was boyfriend, girlfriend love. The closest you'll ever find to God's love in the, in the world is a home and family where everybody loves each other and everyone's getting along. Love in the home and family. God's plan for a family is a man and a woman to get married and raise children. Let me say that again. God's plan in the Bible is for a family is a man and a woman to marry and have children, and that's the closest thing to a picture of heaven that you can have here on this earth. But the devil has twisted and distorted the home until most homes tonight resemble a war zone and a picture of hell instead of heaven. I heard of a girl the other day, this young lady, she took, um, they took her to a psychiatrist or something and got her medicine, and she cut herself. Many young people cut themselves tonight. tonight. There's is a, is a thing that goes on tonight where they'll take a razor blade or a knife and cut their, their wrist or their legs or something to, to make themselves bleed. And what she said was, listen, what she said was the voices in her head were telling her to cut. And she said the only way she could make them voices stop is to cut and draw blood. Now let me explain what's going on there. Cutting yourself in the Bible is a sign of demonic possession. It's always a picture of a person who's filling with demonic spirits. So that girl was messing with a demon and didn't even realize he was messing with her. And the reason he wanted her to cut, her, cut herself is so when, that, when she cut herself and that blood came out, that appeases the devil because the de devil is jealous of Jesus. The devil wants blood to be shed just like God let his son's blood be shed. So the devil says, offer that blood to me and he'll leave you alone for a while. She didn't realize it. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what happened? They asked her, what, how'd you get like this? And here's what she said. Her mom was on meth. She's a drug addict. And she said, my mom would bring home random boyfriends every week and mom would be passed out and those boyfriends would wind up molesting me and my brother. And so demonic spirits made their way into that home through the failure of that mom of not having 
uh, uh, God in that home. I'm a firm believer that you need to have Christian music, Christian preaching played in your home every day. Dirty music draws in evil spirits and godly music pushes evil spirits away. We have it at my house, radio sitting on the, on the, on the counter and, and 24 hours a day in my house, well, I have gospel music playing. I, I, it's probably playing right now, uh, keeping evil spirits away. And that's what that girl did not realize and the devil got in that home. We all heard just a few years ago up in, um, out in Las Vegas, Nevada, everybody here was shocked when we heard that the worst mass shooting in American history had taken place. That young man by the name of Paddock got in his room way up there in the Mandalay Hotel there in Las Vegas. There was 22,000 people below him at a concert. He took 23 guns and thousands of rounds of ammunition into that motel room. He began opening the window and one right after another emptied those automatic rifles into that crowd. 58 people were killed and I think around 500 or so injured. They did a background check on that guy and there was not one single trait that he had to be a serial killer. Nothing on his computers, nothing in his background. That is if you're a psychologist or a psychiatrist. But you know what happened? That young man, or he was 60 years old, that man came from a very dysfunctional, abusive home. He was guilt-ridden environment with unmanageable anger. And that boy grew up in crime and with a daddy who couldn't control his temper and he did not know what real love is. As a matter of fact, he would hire professional prostitutes in his room, pay them thousands of dollars a night. And he would tell them, I'm a bad person. I've got bad blood in me. Where did that come from? It came from that home where there was no God. He grew up just tossed around like a pinball in a machine. Ladies and gentlemen, you people listen to me tonight. You husbands and wives, listen to me tonight. You stay together. You raise those kids. If you have a problem, by the grace of God, overcome them and keep your home together and raise them boys and girls for the glory of God. You listen? Children from a divorced family are five times more likely to have antisocial behavior, emotional distress, educational problems, commit crimes, and wind up with addiction, poverty, violence, and suicide. Because once the devil breaks up mom and daddy, he's got his foot in the door, and like a snake goes after those children. He didn't know what love was. The boy didn't know. You say, well, Brother Danny, what happened? By an ungodly woman, he was brought to a piece of bread of rape and lust and fantasy. And ladies and gentlemen, all that, that violence, that anger, that sexual lust all together always results in violent behavior and murder. It'll take you down the wrong way. That's why we preach against pornography. That's why we tell you to don't watch dirty pictures on your phone. That's why we say turn that filth on that TV off. That's why we say don't go to the dirty movies. Don't watch them because that will put something inside you that'll turn you into a monster. He'll do it. He'll do it. Love in the home. 
It's so sad tonight. You say, preacher, we're having marriage trouble. I know it happens. Sometimes you can't help it. I ain't fussing at you. Help me now, all you mamas. Listen, them kids didn't ask to be brought into this world. You brought them into this world. Bless the Lord, man up and be a man and take your responsibility and be a woman and raise them kids for the glory of God. Love in the family. It's so sad. I heard a story not long ago where this woman and her boyfriend were traveling from up here somewhere down to Florida. And this woman was very mean to her child. A little baby, about two years old. You know how they are when they're 18 months to two years old. They drive you crazy. And she, and she would, was mean to it. Didn't know how to discipline it. Didn't even try to do it right. And for punishment, she would take that little child and put them in the closet and shut the door and lock them in there. That was her way of punishment. That's not biblical punishment. That's inhumane, uncruel, uh, cruel, uh, 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 unusual punishment. They, were on, they went to Florida. Her and her boyfriend were going to party. They checked in that old motel down there, and it was a lot warmer down there. Went into a cheap motel. Paid the bill. Went in that room. An old ratty, run-down place. And as they got in that room, that child pitched a fit. It was tired. It was hot. There was all kinds of, a uh, uh, little, little baby was crying. And she knocked it around her, shut up! And the more she did, the, the more it would cry. And she said, we want a party. Grabbed that young'un, opened up that closet, and slammed it in that old closet in that motel and said, now you stay in there till you learn how to hush and slammed that door and you could hear it screaming and crying and screaming and crying. And usually, after a few minutes, it was so tired and just cried itself out and would fall over on the floor and go to sleep while she got high. So it cried and screamed and then it quit. When it quit, she said, well, he's gone to sleep now. We'll have fun. They passed out, drunk, high. The next morning, got up, wondered why the baby hadn't made any noise. And opened up that closet door, young people. And there laid her child in the floor. No, no breathing, life gone out of its body. And right beside it was a six-foot rattlesnake. Was quiet up there and had bit that child repeatedly while it was screaming. That comes from no God and love in the home. Hey kids, can I tell you something tonight? You hear preachers say this all the time, but you better listen to me. This world is not your friend. They do not care about you. They'll make a drug addict out of you. They'll make a prostitute out of you. They'll make a drug dealer out of you. This world's not your friend. Let's check back in with our friend Tasha just a little bit later, a few months later. Hey, what's up? Nah, things haven't gotten any better. Everything's gotten way worse. First it was Jacob and all that garbage, and no, I'm not. I'm glad I'm not. That's the only good thing. How can I love a baby? I don't even know if there's love in the whole world anymore. Mom and Dad, all they do is fuss and fight. Me and my brother argue constantly. Now, Mom's looking for an apartment. I just don't know what to do anymore. I mean, my grandma forgot her pain pills and I just keep staring at that bottle every day. I just don't want to live anymore.
know the statistics. You've heard them read. Thousands of girls just like that take their lives in this country every year. I didn't start doing this yesterday. I guarantee you there is a multitude of young people here tonight. If you had the nerve, you'd take your life. You know why? Because the devil will cheat you. He'll lie to you. Let me take just a minute here tonight and explain to you what love really is. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children and sons of God. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16. God is love. 1 John 4 and verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. Revelation 1 5 said unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. It wouldn't have been so amazing if he had washed us and then loved us. But he loved us before he ever washed us. And that's what love is tonight. John chapter 11. Not he who loveth thee is sick, but he whom thou lovest. As they talked about Lazarus. They said over in England many, many years ago, a man by the name of William Dixon had lost, a guy had lost his son. His neighbor's house was on fire and when this guy's house caught on fire, Mr. Dixon ran and the mama got out and some of the others got out and the little boy, baby, was upstairs waiting to be burned to death. They said that man climbed up on the outside of the house and took his hands on a burning hot pipe and held onto that pipe and brought in and rescued that baby. He brought it down and saved it alive and gave it to the mother. Years went by. The, grand, the mother had perished. The grandmother raised the baby. And it wasn't long when the boy was a little older, they, they, the grandmother passed away and she died and they were gonna take the young boy to court as they used to do back in them days. They would take it to uh, the court and people who wanted to raise the child would come and present their reasons why they could take care of it and the judge would award custody of that child to one of those families. Well, they all showed up that day and one of them said, I got a nice house, I can take care of him. Another one said, I've got plenty of money, I can take care of him. And William Dixon was there. And the judge said, sir, are you here to go custody of this child? He said, I am, sir. He said, what merit do you have? What do you have that would cause the court to award the custody of the child? He held up and he showed them them hands. Those hands that had those old ugly scars from holding on to that pipe. And the judge said, you love that boy enough to scar your hands. I'll give you custody of him. I'm telling you, hallelujah, that's only just a little tiny, tiny picture of what the blessed Lamb of God did many, many, many years ago. Hallelujah, when he pulled out his hand like that. Before I was ever born, before I ever lived in this world, Jesus was on the cross. He looked out across the Sea of Galilee. He looked out across the Mediterranean Sea. He looked out across Europe, across the Atlantic Ocean, 2,000 years ahead of time saw a little old 18 year old boy wanting to get saved by grace and turned up his cup and drank it. That's what love is. Yeah. Herein is love that God loved us. For I am persuaded. Romans chapter eight, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Lord, I've been through all that stuff. I'm telling you, he loved me through it all. He loved me when I was up. He loved me when I was down. He loved me when I felt like 
give it up and he loved me when I felt like shouting all over the place. His love is unconditional, unrelentless. That's what love is. He loved me when I'm happy. He loved me when I'm sad. He loved me when my faith is strong. He loved me when I'm doubting everything I ever believed. He loved me when I'm shouting. He loved me when I'm crying my eyes out. I'm telling you, he loved you when you got some money in your pocket. He loves you when you're broke as Job's turkey. He loves you when you're fired up and going serving God. He loves you when you're discouraged and hurt and down and about ready to give it all up. He loves you. I heard a man say this one time, and it ain't no license to sin, but I about shouted when I heard him say it. He said, I can't do anything that'll make me love him anymore, make him love me anymore, and I can't do anything that'll make him love me any less. Lord have mercy. I'm secure in that love. The songwriter said, oh love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. Amen. Hallelujah. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen could ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Jesus' first words on earth were, wist you not that I must be about my father's business? And his last words were, it's finished. He got the business done. He knows everything about you, but he cares about you anyway. He knows your down sittings, your uprising. And understand that your thoughts are far off. That dark secret, listen to me, girls. That dark secret that nobody else knows, he knows. That's one that you're afraid to talk to your mama or your pastor. You're afraid to tell anybody because you don't want them to think you're awful. He knows about it. And he loves you anyway. I'm telling you something, people. If it were not for the love of God in this world, there wouldn't even be no reason to live. His love is real. Could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made with every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry nor could the scroll contain the whole that stretched from sky to sky. Tonight, I want to show you what happens when the girl finally finds what real love is. Pastor Mike, what brings you by today? Up yonder. Up the other one. I came to see your parents. Are they here? Nope. They ain't here as usual. Guess I'll have to catch them later. I'll see you later, Tasha. You have a good day. And remember, God loves you. Um, can I ask you a question before you leave? Sure, anything, Tasha. Well, I've heard that my entire life about how God loves you. I'm just not sure if I believe it anymore. See, because iniquity abounds in the world, it can be hard to see God's love. But trust me, God's love is real. It's unconditional. And it's unfailing. His love is faithful through every situation in your life. Well... I just don't see it anymore. Things have been so hard and I just want to give up. I just don't want to live anymore. Sounds like you need proof of God's love. And I can see your heart is broken. 
But I'm going to tell you, there's one in heaven who cares about you. He sees every tear that falls, every single sparrow that hits the ground and dies, he sees and takes note of. And he said, you're more than, worth more than many sparrows. See, Tasha, one day when he was in heaven and nothing, nothing to, to lose or nothing to gain by coming down here and dying for our sins, he came down and walked this earth for 33 years and lived a perfect life. And he felt our pain during that. He was hungry. He was tired. And one day, he went to a cross. And when he went to that cross and died for you, see, Tasha, he died for you specifically. He saw you, and he died for your sins. And right now, he will trade your messed up life for his perfect life. And you can have life anew. I think you've been looking for love in the wrong places, Tasha. Look on the cross. That's true love. Look on what Jesus did for you on the cross. Just look on it, Tasha. Believe it. I see it. I finally see it after all this time. I never realized God could love somebody like me, especially after all the mistakes that I've made. I want that. I want God's love in my heart. I want to live for him. I want him to be a part of my life. Lord Jesus, I am so sorry I've kept you out of my life for so long. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for my sins. Please come into my heart and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. He loves you more than anybody ever could or would. Teenager, can I tell you something tonight? He loves you. That boy may not, that girl may not, but he does. Would you bow your head, please? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Nobody's looking, nobody's talking, nobody's moving. Every head bowed, every eye is closed tonight. You let God speak to your heart. He loves you tonight. And He cares about you. He wants to help you tonight, teenager. He wants to help you. It's time for you to do business with God here tonight. It's time for you to do business with God. Everybody do business with God here tonight. Maybe you've been saved, but the devil's convinced you it's not worth it. Maybe you've been saved, but you ain't been living right, and you realize tonight just how much God loves you. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never been saved. This is your night to get saved. This is your night to get saved. Some's coming. I'd do business with God if I was you tonight. Let's all stand. Father, do what ought to be done right now. God, do what ought to be done right now. Save lost souls. Touch somebody's heart. Move in this place tonight. You come on right now. Amen. Amen. Come on right now, teenagers. Go ahead, girls. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Come on tonight. Come on, young people. Yeah. Come on, teenagers. Let's do business with God here tonight. Yeah. Come on, young people. Come on tonight. Maybe you're back there to back tonight. You want to do business with the Lord. You come on right now. Yes, hallelujah. The highest star. Yeah. Somebody pray with these girls coming here. Somebody pray with these girls over here. Come on. The guilty pain. Yeah. 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 Amen. Somebody pray with these boys coming over here. Some of you preachers pray this young man. Yeah. He's every child. He reconciled. And pardoned from all sin. Oh, love of God. How rich and pure. How measureless. Yeah, come on tonight. Somebody pray with these girls over here. One of you ladies. Amen. 
Come on tonight. Come on tonight. Yeah. Hit man. Hit man. Lord of God. When hurry shall pass away. Hey man. And earthly thrones. How about it tonight, teenager? You need to do business with God here tonight. Hey man. Rocks and hills and mountains call. God's love so short. Yeah. Trust you in joy. Hallelujah. All measureless That's right. and strong. Amen. Redeeming grace to our own race. The saints and names. You let God speak to you. Come on. Come on right now, girls. This is a place to settle it right here. You don't have to commit suicide. You don't have to give yourself away. You don't have to live a wicked life. Come on tonight. Let's do business with God. Amen. Could we with the ocean feel and were the skies of parchment made yeah, come on tonight. Come on tonight. And every man Hallelujah. Hey man, say. Hallelujah. Bring the ocean down. I'm still praying. Sing one more. Could we with Amen. Amen. The ocean's fear. They're not going to hear this on TV, y'all. And where the They're not going to hear about the love of God in the movies. The They're not going to hear it on the radio. They're going to hear it right here in church. In that old book right there. Amen. Every man Hey. To write the love of God above Bring the ocean dry Amen. How measureless Amen. and strong it shall forevermore endure. Amen. The saints and angels song. Amen. Amen. They're getting saved all over the place here tonight. That one got saved. Other got saved. Amen. Amen. Hey man, Brian, plug that one up. Just a plug. Hey man, thank you. Hey man. Hey man. Lord of God. Hallelujah. All right, thank you. Let's take just a minute here tonight. 
If you prayed with somebody who just got saved here tonight, I know there's a bunch of people getting their heart right. If you prayed with somebody who just got saved tonight, raise your hand real big and wave at me. There's Raise your hand real big and wave at me. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five. I can't, I can't see right. Wave them like this. Uh, here we go. I see you, honey. Uh, I don't know how many that is. Several got saved right in here tonight. Back there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. 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 If you don't mind, be seated just a second. I got this good sister. Thank you. If you don't mind, be seated just a second. Uh, we have while I'm while I'm telling you what we're going to do. Uh, we have a missionary here tonight. Josh, Josh, come up here just a second. We I want you to pray for this. this young man's a missionary. And I, all you preachers might need to talk to him before he leaves. I'll have him to stand up right here. He was at our church a few weeks ago, done a tremendous job Amen. going to Thailand. And I'm telling you, done a great job. A lot of missionaries, you know, they need to help a little bit. But that boy there, he, he preached good and got a real burden. If y'all want to help him out, that'd be great. Now, while, while everybody's getting settled down, I know everybody's tired. We got people that's been on the road here all day long. And there's a little, a little fidgety in here tonight, but we're going to have a whole lot more kids tomorrow night. So our bus workers, they're going to get their hot dogs and stuff, get on the bus and leave for everybody else. Help me back there. For everybody else. You see that? Hot dog plate, $2, can't beat that. That's chips, drink, everything. Hamburgers, I got hamburgers and hot dogs. Funnel cake, if you've never had jambalaya, you ought to go up there and eat it. It's some kind of cage in Louisiana, something or another, with shrimp and beef or something. It's good, it's good. Up there for $2, a bowl. Now, the reason we do this, so you won't have to go out to a restaurant. So stay tonight, save your money, Put it in an offering if you got money to blow on a restaurant and, and eat here. The ladies got it ready. There's plenty of food. Uh, we got a big day tomorrow. Your schedule here tells you. Now, I need to make a quick announcement. Anybody who gets here tomorrow before 1230 will have to go around and use the lower entrance. They're going to have the little soapbox cars out there racing tomorrow morning. If you get here before 12.30, follow the sign and come in the lower entrance down there. After 12.30, we'll have it open. You can come in just like you did today. The, we're going to have basketball, four-wheeler, half-court soccer, if there is such a thing, um, boxing, and all kinds of stuff tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, probably between 2 and 2.15, we will start the evening service and go till about 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, we'll break for supper. And then the big motorcycle jump, these guys will be at 5.40 tomorrow evening with Dr. Phil Kidd tomorrow night. So a big, big day's coming. Big crowd's coming tomorrow, y'all. Uh, so enjoy all this room we got here tonight, okay? All right, I'm going to have Josh, if he'll ask the Lord to bless the food and fellowship, everybody be careful, and y'all come up here and see this man before you go, and when he gets through praying, you're dismissed, help us keep the trash out of here and the chair straightened up, okay, please? Go ahead, Josh. Let's pray. Can you hear me? Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful youth rally, for the time that we got to uh, not only have fun and uh, to... Uh, the food that's going to come, but I thank you that the word of God was preached here tonight and then it went forth in power, that souls were saved, the gospel is still saving souls, the Holy Spirit is still at work here, Amen. the harvest truly is still plenteous, and so I pray, Father, that you would please be upon this meeting even more Amen. Uh, tomorrow, that uh, we would get a double portion of your spirit Amen. tomorrow. Please bless the food, bless the time of fellowship, give us all safe travel as we go home, and bring us all back tomorrow, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.